Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here on Ravenport. We are going to carry straight on from where we left off in the last episode, so let's get to it. We've got a bit of fertilizer that we'll need doing in that section there, and then we've got a bit of fertilizer that we'll need doing in that section there. There's not all that much that's going to need fertilizer on it, to be honest. Right, and surprisingly so, I thought that there would be a lot more fertilizer needed across that whole field. So, I mean, yeah, we will go up there and we'll put some on, but we may not be able to fertilize as much as we'd hoped. And also, I don't know how the hired help is going to cope with it, because obviously, um, we're not going to be able to fertilize everything. Now, what are you going to do? Am I just going to take you with me? No, nope, you're going to stay there. Excellent. Right, you continue to stay right where you are, and then you and I are going to be very, very happy. We go right round that way and turn sharp, and then haul that one in. I do love the fact that we can turn really sharp with this. That is actually a really cool thing. It seems, and it seems like quite a, a natural sort of thing as well. Just the way that the, um, not the, I was going to say header, the, the way that the PTO is sort of fastened onto there. Um, it's quite a natural thing because you've got a gearbox on the bottom there so you can turn as sharp as you like and it's not going to put any undue pressure onto the PTO shaft which is that's actually a really really good thing that is some good engineering on that that means that no matter which angle I'm at I'm not putting any extra pressure onto the PTO shaft whatsoever so I can turn as sharp as I need to and I'm guessing that is done because uh, these bio balers, they're not actually in real life. They're not designed just for doing poplars. I've seen them going through on scrublands and baling up gorse bushes, baling up loads of thorns and brambles and just general weed and stuff like that. Literally, they go through and they bale up anything, anything and everything. And so because you're taking them over very rough land, sometimes, um, sometimes you've got to be turning really really sharp with them you've got to be doing a lot of really aggressive turning and maneuvering with them um although because it's only videos that i've ever seen them in i haven't seen that many videos either um it might not be a, an entirely accurate depiction and i might be thinking of a different type of bait it might be like a different type of bio baler but i think it's something pretty similar to this i think it is I am, that's, that's, that's as close as I can get to accuracy, I think, with this, is that um, I've seen something in a video, and I'm pretty certain it's this one. So whether or not I've actually got that right, um, I'm going to leave that down to you lot to tell me whether I've got that right, because if I have, excellent, fantastic, wonderful. If I haven't, then obviously get into the comment section and, and correct me, because you know I don't like to be wrong. I really, really hate it when I get things wrong. So um, I believe that they can use it for just about anything and also that just about anything can be used for bio bales as well although again i'm not 100 percent certain i don't know if you can like just go across ordinary scrub land and bale everything up or if you you know certain crops obviously if you're growing the crops for biomass um there's certain crops that are preferred there's a type of grass I think it's a type of elephant grass that is grown here in the UK. It takes two years. Miscanthus. That's what it is. Miscanthus. Um, takes two years to grow. And you see it growing in the fields. Um, and the first year it, it sort of grows up. And then it looks like it dies off in the winter. And so you just got this great big field of like dead grass. And then the second year it grows, it grows again. And it grows higher. And then they come along and they bale it all up. And... It, do, it looks really good. Like, I like seeing the stuff growing in the fields, and I know that that is used as a biomass crop because it is a very high-yielding biomass. But for the amount of time that it takes to grow versus the amount of biomass that you get back from it, it's a high-yielding crop and is is quite sought... Well, I'd say sought after. It's, 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 it's done because it's value for money. Right, the amount of time taken to grow versus the amount of biomass you get. And it's not just done based on uh, the actual volume of the plant when it's harvested. The, you know, the miscanthus, when you harvest it, is pretty dry when you, um, you go through and you cut it and you bale it. 
which is one good thing about it. Um, it's something to do with the amount of actual biomatter that is in the plant that can be turned into um, pellets and stuff like that. Well, I'm assuming pellets. Um, after it's been processed. And miscanthus has got a very high return on it. And that's also, and the same is true with poplars. Poplars have also got quite a high return. They, um, although miscanthus is grown for two years, poplars, I believe, are harvested every five years. And again, as far as I know, poplars, they can be cut and then they sprout out from the bottom. Well, the trees can be cut and they sprout out from the bottom, as far as I know, but I'm not sure if it's um, commercially viable to allow them to sprout and then harvest the same field again. It might be that for commercial viability, they can't actually do that. What they've instead got to do is they go through, they harvest, and then after the harvest is done, they plough up the field and they go elsewhere. No clue which one is done, which one is viable. I haven't got a clue on that. I haven't looked into it. It's not something I know anything about. Um, although, that being said, I now want to go and find out. So, I might try and find out ready for at some point. I'll forget all about it, don't worry. And um, So, I won't actually have looked this up until next week sometime, if if then. So, it's, um, yeah, don't, don't, don't count on me telling you just yet. You could always try and tell me in the comments. Hop into the comments, let me know down below which one is the most economically viable. Do we do this one or do we do a different one? Once I get down to the other end, I think, because, yeah, we've got one more run here. If we go all the way round, our final round will take care of all of the rest of this really thick bit of crop down the bottom. And that's going to be it. Let's just get rid of you right there. And we can carry on a little bit further. And we get another bale before we finish this run along here. Um, yeah, we got one more bit there, I think, that's slightly thicker than the rest of the runs. And then we've just got the, the standard thickness of crop all the way across the field. Um, we're going to check on our driver up the top, see how they're getting on. We haven't heard much from them lately. They're very likely going to be getting into trouble in a minute. We should get one more bale before we get down to the end of the field. Fill that one up. It's quite it is really surprising the difference that it makes. So if you want to, I mean, yeah, it's it's not a real life thing having it this thick on the ground, though, is it? Helper D has completed their. I was just talking about you, Helper D. Literally just talking about you. So we'll stop you right there a second, and we will whip up through and have a little look and see how you've gotten on. Right. Wow. Okay, I'm impressed. Helper D has actually done something useful. They've, they've gone round and they've done... I mean, yeah, we've got the triangles up there, which we'll go and take care of right now. I hope if I started the tractor up. Okay, we'll go... We'll take care of this bit, and then we've got lime to spread across the whole field. We've got... Um, there's a lime tower that we can go and buy lime from over there, so it's, it's fairly close by, so we're not going to have to worry too much about having to go long distances to get the lime for the field. we just got to go down through and just tidy this up first. So let's do that a minute. Down through there. Yeah, it's going to take a bit. Um, all right, I'll run up through here a second. I suppose this is always the question. When a farmer is planting a field... Do they double plant the bits on the triangles like this? When, when you're going over on a, 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 an angle, I mean, yeah, you can switch modern seed drills off in sections now if you want to. But do you double plant the triangle and have a thinner, so the crop ends up being thinner and you get more of it um, lodging, you know, uh, like uh, falling over and not growing properly? Um, oops, I didn't want to do that. Uh, I wanted to do that. Um, do you do it like that, or do you do it the other way and have your uh, and, and leave gaps so that you don't have any of the crop falling over? Almost every farmer I've ever known will overlap, so you have a bit of the crop there that's double planted because you get some yield out of it, and then some years you might get bits of it that do end up lodging, falling over, with 
um, once they've gotten too ripe, that sort of thing. But generally speaking, you would have it like that. I did know one farmer that would actually leave gaps. And I'm never quite sure why he did. Because everyone else I ever worked for and ever knew wouldn't do it like that. They, they would consider that to be a waste because of the, the wasted space. But he didn't like having his crop um, lodging. Um, and... Uh, he wanted a, a, a flat, uniform yield, and he'd rather have a little bit less than overplant, and then you get those areas of the crop that don't perform very well. And he also said something about disease, but I've never seen any record, I've never seen any evidence that such a thing could even cause disease. So I, I don't know if it was just him overreacting and, and doing something a little bit strange and different to everybody else, or if there was anything in it whatsoever. So if anybody has ever heard of the far farmers leaving triangles on the, those bits, leaving them bare, if, any, if anybody does it or has ever heard of it being done, please let me know. I would very much like to know about this. Is it actually a thing or is it just this one person being a little bit strange? Right, I'm going to leave that. The reason I've come down here is because I wanted to unload that fertilizer and I just want and the seed. I just wanted to dump it out onto the ground for now. We'll we'll pick the fertilizer up again. And there's a little bit of corn there on the side. We'll pick that up as well. Um, we've got our seed drill. I'm going to leave the seed drill right there. And I can then go and get the lime spreader. Actually, you know what? We, we'll we'll con let's contact the dealership a minute. Where are you, Mr. Dealership? I want to go garage. We contact the dealership and we'll get him to come and pick that one up. Because we've got no use for it anymore. So if you come and collect that one. Return. Right there. Yes. Right, thank you very much. He's come and collected that one. It's very quick. I mean, the guy could be a pickpocket. He could come and grab that one without anybody ever noticing. Nobody would ever be any the wiser. And he'd come along and he would snatch it right out from under you and we will back up here and hitch this one and we've got nothing in it at the moment did i unload any lime have i got lime bags lying around anywhere i don't think i have no because we used that's what we did we used it up on the field up there didn't we we used it up on the grass field and then we uh, didn't refill and didn't bother doing the rest of the grass because you don't actually need to do lime on grass. It makes no difference whatsoever. I have since found that out. Now, I'm going to go to there. I've got to manually open this one, I think. Yes. And we can fill that bad boy up there. So then we'll take this load up to the top and we will do once around the outside of the field and then we will let the hired help carry on and lime the entire field. If we do that whole field, then everything up there is done. And we're probably not going to need to go back to doing it at all, I wouldn't have thought, before we finish up this series. Um, so it does depend how many crops we take from up there. There we go. One full load of lime. So it will drag this bad boy over here. We need to go all the way back up to the top. We go the same way that we went just now. We go up the track up the back here rather than try and take any other routes. And get this lime. Oh, it's there. There's, I got two. Seriously, I got two bags of it right there, right in front of me. And I completely missed them. I drove right past them and I could. Uh, we'll pick them up and we'll keep them in the spreader. I know last time I emptied them out because we weren't. Didn't I empty them out because we weren't going to keep them in the spreader or something? Honestly, can't remember now. It was such a very long time ago, I just can't remember. But not not that it really matters. Let's get this one up to the top, then we can open it up, and we can start doing our spreading our talcum powder out across the field. And then we've got a supply of the stuff that's a bit closer than the supply down here. So it'll be fairly easy to get to. It's handy also having this more powerful tractor, just, just even if it is temporary because actually you know what i'm gonna go this way and we're gonna start at this end i'm not sure how long one load of this is gonna last but i got a feeling that we're not going to complete a full circuit so if we're up near the other end and we've only got like two thousand liters left 
we can just stop and nip across the railway tracks over there and reload before we go and finish off everything. So we want to go, we'll go on round this way. We won't bother turning back on ourselves there. We'll go up to here, go along in front of the mansion. Just admire it as we go on by. Yeah, that will be ours one day. That will be ours. We will own that place. We'll have this beautiful great big mansion that we will live in and it will be absolutely wonderful. Now, let's start this by spreading lime all over the road and then having the, the, the local council coming along and, and getting all upset with us. Right, I've spread lime on the road, so now we can go and spread lime on the rest of it. Are we going to get halfway... I, hmm. We, well... <laughs> I'm wondering if we're even going to get halfway around this field. Right, we, 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 we get sort of part way, I think, but I don't know if I'm even going to... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm seriously doubting whether we're going to make it all the way up the other end of the field before we've actually got to re go and reload. Well, we might. We might. We've still got 12,000 litres left. Down to... Eight, yeah, 15%. Yes, we will. We met... Actually... Now that, I, now that we've sort of gotten a little bit further, I'm actually thinking that we might get do a complete circuit all the way around the field. If we're going to do complete circuits, it might be better to do a complete circuit from this end rather than the other end. So maybe we want to go and top up anyway from here. We'll run, we'll, as soon as we've done this little bit down to the corner, we go and top up and then we can start working on um, all the rest of it. Do we want to? No. Only a quarter used so far. We've got one straight line to do up alongside the railway track, which will actually be less ground to cover than the top side of the field here with the, the wiggly, wavy lines. I think we're going to be all right. I think we will get up to the other end, and then we will also be able to come down here and we'll be able to start working a little bit on the land work. The land, because this one is so much wider than the sea drill, I am curious if it's going to even cope with doing the land work. If it's going to turn around and say that it's too much for it. It's going to try to turn around once and it's just going to say, nope, we're finished. There is no more land here. Uh, it's highly likely that it will do that, just because of the way that the, the field is, is kind of finished. So I'm going to bring that one out to there and then I'm going to stop it. And then if we back it round like that, Bring you up this side, up to about there, and then we can start you again. Excellent. Right, now we've got to run in a straight line all the way up alongside the railway. I love the train going past. It always looks quite cool when the train goes past. Kind of makes the map just feel a little bit more alive when you see the train going by. Um, I mean, yes, I don't know if... Actually, I think it is, somebody can tell tell me this because I haven't sort of checked this in 1.3 at all. But if you've got the train as uh, self, well, the, the train, I think the train just self drives around the map automatically. If you've got tab to train enabled, I mean, I don't have it enabled on at the moment on this. But if you've got the tab to train and you tab onto the train, as soon as you tab onto the train, it immediately starts slowing down and it will come to a halt. If you then tab out of the train, does it eventually start up and start moving around the track again? Or does it just stop where it is and stay there permanently until you come back to it and start it up again? I'm not quite sure how that works, whether you've got to choose to have it going or not. If you haven't, because we don't have tab to train, I know that it will just keep driving around the track if you don't have tab to train. But whether or not it does do this when you're also able to go and use it. I'm not quite sure. I suppose there is an easy way for me to check. I could actually, you know, go go and do that right now, couldn't I? And and then I'd be able to, to check. You know, you know what it let's 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 try this. Let's let's try something. Oop. Wait a minute. Rather than emptying out the entire load right here into one spot. Um let's try <laughs> Ah, oh, I can't believe I was going to do that. Right. Uh, tab to tray economic difficulty. Help a refill. Plant withering. Well, well, where are you? GUI. Switch to train. There we go. I, thought it was, I, I was looking for tab. That's why. 
Switch to trains. Okay. So now I'll go through here. I'll go through all of these. Like this. And you can see right there, I don't have the train thing on them. And I mean, yeah, I'm going downhill, but it's already slowing down. The train is now, so I'm not actively applying brakes, but the train is starting to slow down. So what I'm going to do is I'm now actively applying the brakes. And we're going to slow this bad boy all the way down. What is this? It's Pacific Northwest or something. There. Stop. And I'll switch the engine off as well. Alright, so I've now shut it off completely. Then I'm going to go back to our tractor over here. I'm going to leave it on switch to trains. And we'll see if it starts itself back up again in 10 minutes or so. I suppose I could. No, that way. Uh, I'll leave it switched on. I'll, I'll do that. I'll leave it switched on. Let's go back to spreading our lime a minute. And we'll see in a little while if it um, actually starts up and starts moving again. We've, we've left the engine running on it. And we, um, we can also test a few other bits. Maybe just switch the engine off. See if that makes a difference to it. I'm kind of hoping it doesn't. I'm kind of hoping that the thing does eventually just keep moving no matter what you do. Because I've no idea why, but I would find that whole idea immensely pleasing. That the train will just keep going. No matter what, the train is always going to be moving. It's always to, it's, it's to be relied upon no matter what. And also, it's, it's cool being able to see the thing driving around. Now, I'm going to head down to the other end. And we're going to start doing a little bit of hired help work down here. Um, although, maybe we'll go and get the... Well, I'll start off a little bit of hired help work. And we'll go and fill up with lime after I've set a, a line or two down through here. Uh, there's a line right there that I think we'll set. We'll start from that point. We'll let it self... See, uh, self seed cell self, self work do, do do the hired help work type thing it'll be fine here it's when it gets to the other side of the field right there um and it starts having those long runs i'm not sure if it's going to be able to cope with that bit and also we're obviously we it will leave a triangle or two here or well i was thinking it would leave a triangle or two it might not it might actually cope with this is it going to take the sign out? It may cope with this and it may not take any of the signs out either. It may just go right round the whole lot and completely ignore everything. So far, so good. Now, if you could stop there, if you could back up. No, 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 no. Okay, it's going to leave a little bit of it. It shouldn't leave anything there. There is a little bit of a gap. Nope, that's fine. And we're about to run out of lime. Right, I'm thinking what I will do is I will stop it up here. Stop it right there. The reason I'm going to stop it there is because then I can bring it back and we can set the hired help going in exactly the same spot that it was in previously. So we'll go and reload now. Then we can put it back there and we can have it carry on exactly the same spot because we'll have the tracks and everything that sort of show us where it all was. When you get to here... And we've left it for a minute or two. So let's go and have a look. It's not working. It's just switched its own engine off and it's not working. I'm a bit disappointed with that. I was kind of hoping it would. Right, well, let's switch off the switch to trains. Hopefully this will allow it to start working again. Um... I'm also going to... I'm going to switch on the, the thingy like that. I'm hoping that will also help it. And there. We've we've lost our ability to switch to the trains. But hopefully it will come back up round and it will, the, the train will actually now be moving around on the map. It's got no, we don't have a marker to show where it is. So we won't be able to see that. Again, we will just hope. We will hope that it will work. We know that it does eventually start working. So, with a bit of luck, it will start working again pretty soon. When we come to our biogas plant, then, we want to be driving up the road up this side. 
and straight in around here. We can get from the other end as well, come in through. It's a nice easy run. We go in through this bit here, run along there and tip out right here. And then we've got two clamps here that we can tip out on. And then there's an exit there and an exit over here. Can we, if I get a truck, I mean, we've got a truck. If I get a, um, I'm going to bring this one around the other way because it just seems a little bit odd to me to load it from the other direction because of the way that the, the lid opens. Right, you bring that one there. You'd kind of want it on this side, wouldn't you? It, would, it, would, it makes more sense, load it from this side. Right, so let's start loading you up. Um, yeah, I think we could do this with a road train situation where we've got two trailers on the truck. But, and this is the big but, is when it comes to unloading them when you've got it like that, it's, no, it's never quite as good. It always makes it a little bit more it, difficult and awkward for actually unloading the silage into the clamp. The rest of it works really well. It's just the unloading bit that can sometimes be a bit awkward. So I'm, I am of two minds about that when we come to do the silage. The rest of it should be fairly easy. I mean, it, it might be better if we just stick with one trailer. And what we could also do is we can swap with the, have the forager having, um, having it towing a trailer. If we've got a, we use the big trailers, we'll use the most powerful forager that we can get. So then we can use the big trailers with the dollies because the forager, the hitch on the forager, you can put a dolly on it. You can't put some of the other stuff on it, but I believe you can put a dolly on it. At least I think this is the case. So if that is, if I've got that right, then we should be able to put the forager up here with a dolly on the trailer and it will carry on and, and it'll be absolutely fine. It won't have any issues. And then we can also... The, while that one's working in the field, we can be running backwards and forwards to the clamp. I could also go and download Courseplay and have a go with that as well. I know several of you would like me to try Courseplay. Um, just try it out, see what I think of it. Um, mess it all up. I'm never very good with Courseplay, but that could also be an interesting thing to try. If we have the forager working in the field, then we could have two tractors running on Courseplay and see how that works. Right. Okay, this... This turnaround here shouldn't be any issue for the tractor or for the hired help. Where are you going now? All you need to do is just turn. You don't need to do anything fancy. You just turn round. And we will be very proud of you. We give you a pat on the back. Maybe even a bonus. Well, okay. We're, let's let's not take it too far. Let's, 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 not, get too, let's not get too extravagant. Uh, it's going to be a very, very small triangle at the top there which I think we can generally ignore. So let this one run back down. And this time, they shouldn't have any issues with turning at the bottom. But next time, we may have a problem with them doing turning at the bottom there. Quite sure how that's going to work out. Because if you look at the where it sort of pulls in... This one up here going right up into the corner, that should be fine. You should be able to go all the way up there and then back out, turn around and, and not have any issues at all. But it's coming back the other way that I'm... Now what's he doing? Okay. He did a tidier job there than I expected, it's got to be said. But what are you going to do after your turn? You backed up that far... You well, there we go, folks. I'm afraid that's it. We've run out of time, which means that we need to head on home. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.